Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show, we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor, and you can also find my blogs on gregschnell.com as well as stockcharts.com. So this week, we're going to talk about a rotation to defensives. And the reason that's coming about is because we've got a a market set up where two weeks ago the defensives were starting to improve in their outperformance compared to the rest of the sectors and last week they led the group. Um, that also happened in October when the market was sliding a bit. So we're going to just go in and look at the consumer staples and utilities. Perhaps there's a trade in here for a month or six weeks or something like that and then we'll roll out of that. Um, and if you've got any um, interest in the gregschnell.com website, you can go to gregschnell.com slash explore. You'll save $363 off the uh, regular price and it would end up being $497. And uh, I've got Dwight. It's uh, Galusha working with me as well, so we always do trade setups every day. A monthly recorded conference call coming up on Monday, April the 5th uh, for, for members. And every week you get a newsletter and a weekly video just kind of explaining what's going on in the market. I cover off the Schnell Strength Index to show uh, how that's working. So if you've got any interest there, uh, feel free to whip over again to gregschnell.com slash explore. So let's just quickly cover off what's going on on the indexes. I'm going to start with the S&P 500. So we made this high on Friday, kind of a sudden surge right at the end of last week over here. And we were trying to push up and it, it ended up being our highest close um, of the year. So just barely above the high from a couple of weeks ago. Now um, we continue to test this level, call it 4,000 or 39.90. Um, we're up in that range and the real question is can we hold up here or do we end up going making a lower high? So our momentum indicator started to turn up last week and it's just floating here. This is a 60 minute chart. We, if it starts to make a lower high here and roll back over that would probably suggest we're, we don't have enough energy to get through the high right now. Our momentum indicator is really odd because it keeps making lower highs here uh, working its way down and right now we're we're on a bit of an uptrend, but we want to see if it can actually pop to the upside. On the weekly chart, we've actually got a buy signal on the PPO, so we're still, we continue to watch that. Looking at the NASDAQ, it's a little different story. Um, we, we've got a series of lower highs, and you can see we're very close to trying to break through this trend line. We weren't able to do it on Tuesday. The PPO momentum indicator is rolled over right at zero, and it's trying to figure out which way it wants to go, just kind of flatlining in here. Currently we're stranded below the the 50 day moving average and so if that wasn't going to work for us perhaps we'd pull down to um, the 200 day moving average and we'd probably expect a, a significant bounce off of that. Uh, on a weekly chart we've been on a sell signal for a while here we've had some negative divergence and and the PPO is pulling back. It was up over 7.5%. It's now just around 2.5%. So it's lost quite a bit of its momentum. Again, that's not a uh, death knell after a big run like it's had. But the real question is, where do we start to find support? And if we can't find support along this uptrend, um, a little bit hard to see here on the daily. But if we can't get this uptrend supported, that's probably a place where we could expect the market to... Um, break down a little bit, get try and find support in around the 200-day moving average a little bit lower. Um, you can see we bounced off horizontal support and resistance here so far. The next question would be, you know, does the 200-day hold, it's getting up to that same level, or do we actually drip down into the 11,000s and find support where we did in August, September, October? Don't have an answer for that. We're going to keep watching that. Um, Okay, let's get into what I want to cover off this week, and that is the move into utilities and consumer staples. So um, as soon as I see a rotation of different sectors starting to outperform, I want to follow that lead. I want to at least go investigate it and see if there's charts there that I might like to to you. So again, uh, for those of you that are new to the show, I have a whole bunch of different chart lists all broken out, Canadian transportation, tech stocks, toys, whatever. In this case, utilities and consumer staples, and it's not 
obviously it's not the preferred area of the market to go to. Um, it's not growth and it typically doesn't pop a lot, but some of the runs can be 15, 25% and and you can take those while the market's kind of in a downtrend. So I want to go look for that. So what I've done here is I've clicked on the SCTR ranking, then the industry, and then the sector. And by doing that, uh, whatever I clicked last is the main sort order, but the prior two hold within that. So I've clicked sector last, so everything's staples, and at the bottom here you're going to see utilities. Sorry about the scrolling, maybe I should move it down this way. Um, so there's utilities. What we want to um, do, so then within that sector, we've got the different areas of the market. And then with the scooter ranking within each area, so between the brewers um, down to here and then under the distillers down to here, and you can just kind of see the layers. Now, um, CVS was actually in this list, but it's not in this sector. So it's really kind of odd that it's not listed the same. It's listed under pharmaceuticals for some reason. Uh, but Walgreens Boots is in here, Rite Aid is in here, uh, Pet Med Express. Uh, so these are all under consumer staples, lots of food products. And you can see that not very many of them have a scooter ranking above 75. So that's, um, I would expect if this sector is going to start to lead staples, that we start to see some leadership within it. Here's Darling Ingredients, uh, Bungie. Uh, Pilgrim's Pride. So you can just see uh, just very few above 75. Now, let's talk about what the scooter ranking does. It compares every stock um, compared to its 200-day moving average, 125-day to rate of change, 50-day um, moving average, 20-day rate of change, 14-day RSI, and the three-period PPO histogram. So it's it's got a whole bunch of things and they're all weighted um, differently. But the idea being, try and figure out which stock is stronger compared to itself and then make a table of all of those stocks and compare them to each other and find out which ones are actually the strongest stocks in the groups. So that's what the scooter ranking tries to tell us. To my knowledge, it's the only indicator that tells us the strength compared to its peers. Everything else in an internal measurement, the scooter ranking is an external measurement saying, how am I doing compared to its peers? I think it's pretty important. So um, on here, what we can see, um, just looking through these food groups, a lot of them have weak scooter rankings, but just because they have a weak scooter ranking doesn't mean the stock hasn't been going up. One of the things you'll find is because the computer automatically changes the scale, we call it auto scaling, it'll make it between the high and the low and it will change the scale. By doing that, it makes it hard for us to see when every stock has an uptrend on it. We're trying to figure out which one has been going up better. Um, you, you really have to look at the scale. And, you know, today I was looking at some stocks and they had a scale of 10 cents, some had a scale of 25 cents, and some had a scale of $5. And then you get to a, a chart like Tesla and it might have a $50 scale. So you really have to look on the right hand side and just see how big is the scaling. Um, because if every chart's got an uptrend, it's hard to tell which ones are actually moving up quickly and which ones are moving up in, you know, 25 cent increments. So this one, as an example, has a $2.50 scale. And this one's got a $5 scale. Um, quite you know, quite different in performance. So um, always keep in mind the scale. But anyway, what the scooter ranking does for us is it helps keep track of which prices are actually moving up faster. And so I find it a pretty effective guide. Now, um, some stocks just either are too small a market cap, so they don't get a uh, scooter ranking. But then as we go into different uh, areas, you'll find whatever, let's say, food retailers is hot, just whatever. Um, if if food retailers are breaking out, what you want to see is a whole group of them start to move above the 75 level. And in this case, we've got six or seven of them, and the other 10 are not. Um, you want to try and look at strength, and I typically like a chart around 75%. And the reason I, well, that one looks a little more a little too aggressive. Um, what I'm trying to find is a stock that's got a scooter ranking around 75% showing us that it's moving into the top uh, quartile in terms of price movement. So the bottom quartile, bottom 25%, 25% 
the middle is between 25 and 75 percent I want to find something breaking out into the top group and, and when that happens that's typically a nicer place to look Okay, so you can see how this is all divided. We're going to jump around a little bit here and, and go out and then back into different groups and just um, move through them. So I'm going to start at the very top in the staples. We don't have very many in the distillers um, that are distillers and brewers that have a high scooter ranking. So uh, we'll click on a few of these and then we'll go um, jump back out and go into other areas. Okay, so here's TAP, and what we can see on TAP, the PPO momentum indicator has moved up higher than it's been in five years. That's pretty good. Um, we also see a big downtrend here for years, and it's actually trying to make 52-week highs, which would be the first time on the chart. Um, it's obviously been a pretty weak stock. Beer, not a big hit. The one thing I would say is the scooter ranking is actually starting to hover up around 75 I don't think it's time to get our hopes up yet because the rest of the group isn't performing either. When we go look at Sam Adams, Boston Beer, um, you know, the chart is up in the top right. At least it's been uptrending for many, many years. The PPO is just starting to turn up here. That one looks a little better. And what I like about it is you can see how this, the SCTR is historically up near the top. Um, so this tells me it's probably a strong stock pulling back. This might be a nice place to find an entry as it breaks out. It's pricing uh, up at $1,200 a share. Interesting. And then uh, we'll just see if it can make a run. But you can see it's just trying to break through this 1100 level now. It's actually up to 1200 Wow, this thing's a, a real powerhouse. Anyway, so it's, it's doing very well. And I like the fact that the PPO is just starting to turn up here. That's a nice look. Looking at, I'm trying to go to the next chart. Um, survey says this is probably the Corona company or something. Um, so we're sitting here and we're just barely trying to get to new 52 week highs. The stock hasn't been great either. You can see the scooter ranking never really outperforms a whole bunch. So it doesn't interest me as much. Ambev's probably one of the bigger brewers in the world. That chart looks disastrous. Not really a place I want to park my money. Um, Carlsberg, pretty big beer company. At least it's got an uptrend going on here, but I'll be at the scale going from 16 to 32, whereas that um, Sam Adams Boston beer chart was, was flying. Um, InBev, uh, Anheuser-Busch, not really doing anything. You can see it's been in slow, steady decline here. Um, maybe when all the sports come back, these charts will start to jump a little bit, but so far they haven't. Heineken, um, choppy, nothing really there. Uh, Constellation, this one's been on a nice uptrend. Um, it's an okay chart, nothing wrong with it. I think, again, when you look at the scale here, it's up like 150% from the low, whereas that Boston beer um, was up almost uh, a thousand times, or sorry, uh, 10 times from the low. So you want to keep... Just be aware of that scaling factor on the right hand side and here's uh, Diageo and is trying to break out to new all-time highs hasn't done anything I guess people aren't staying at home and drinking or whatever <laughs> um, with the whole COVID thing I would have actually expected this chart to tilt up a little bit more um, hasn't done that and again the scale here is 85 to 170 so basically over a five-year period it's made a double now let's go back and just quickly look at that Boston Beer Company just to make the point about the scale. See how the scale is pinching down at the top here? The bottom of the chart is 100. So, um, you know, this is 10x, this is 13 times. This has been a nice mover and it looks like it's going to continue to go higher. I, I think it's a nice chart. So anyway, if I was to pick one out of that whole group, that would be my choice. Okay, let's just look here. Uh, go back over to the other list and so you can see as we go through here these ones have a scooter ranking of 2.1 um, you know I don't think that's a chart we want to buy so we're going to just use these scooter rankings to kind of quickly help us here's one called crimson wine it's a low priced um, stock around six dollars but um, it's obviously made a nice run in 2021 jumped up um, 
but again looking at the scale that goes from five dollars to seven dollars so don't get me wrong a 40 percent increase is nice um it didn't do much before that and same with east side distilling Okay, so we've kind of covered that off. Let's go in and look at Walgreens, Rite Aid, Pet Med. Um, two are doing pretty well. The, the third one, not so much. So we're just going to click on this. And um, what you see here, so Walgreens is, uh, again, in the Dow, uh, one of the Dow 30 stocks. It's actually been pushing up here. It's up around $55 Uh it's a choppy chart. I don't like these weekly spikes where the stock runs up and then falls apart, runs up, falls apart. It's just hard to own when it's flipping $10 a week. And, you know, in general, the whole thing's moved $20 in the last six months. So um, great if you're a day trader. I guess not so great if you wanted to do something a little bit more trending. Um, so Again, I would think with all the action on the pharmacies trying to get the vaccines out through them, that chart would do better. Rite Aid, same sort of thing, pretty choppy. Uh, the scooter ranking at least has perked up. Um, but again, from 5 to 20, that's pretty nice. But look at the trend from 175 to 5 before COVID hit. It's hard to really get excited about owning um, these retailers. So there was only a few of them there, just three or four drug retailers. Um, I think the, you know, when we go into these uh, food product companies, there's, let's say the top five here have, have positive scooter rankings, maybe even go down to the top 10. And we could just see if there's anything in there that warrants our interest. So here's Darling Ingredients, and I would say that's a beautiful chart, just trending up and to the right. Momentum's already rolling over, so that probably wouldn't be something that would attract me. Um, I would just rather buy them as they're starting to turn up, not starting to turn down. So that's just a personal preference. Some people like to buy strength, and it keeps going. At this case, once I see the momentum starting to wane, I'm probably more likely to go find something where momentum is just starting to improve. And that's a personal style. Other people would say, are you crazy? Um, anyway, here's Bungie. And what you see here is uh, it has broken out to new five-year highs. It's chopped around for the last eight weeks, just kind of in a sideways range here between 75 and 80 bucks. Nothing wrong with that. It's still working its way higher. I would just say momentum. We've got a PPO sell signal right now. For me, that would just be an avoid because it's already kind of made its big move and momentum starting to flatten out. It can stay up here for a while. It could keep going. I, I mean, it's a world of 8,000 stocks. Well, why take one where the momentum's starting to wane? Um, Pilgrim's Pride, really choppy. Wow, this thing goes up and down and up and down. Looks more like a California roller coaster than a food company. Not exactly the kind of stock I want to own. Um, at least it's trending up. The PPO is moving up above 75. But again, it looks pretty extended compared to history. We're kind of at the highest momentum readings in five years. It doesn't mean sell it, but it sure um, suggests to me to be more cautious, especially when it's not very friendly to the owner. Um, you know, what you make, you give back the next year. So got to take it off the table when it's near the top and let it reset before you get back in. Um, looking at Nature Sunshine products, that one's still got a nice uptrend going on it. Um, PPO rising nicely. Again, sometimes what you see on these scooter rankings is that they'll have been very um, beaten down and then they start to improve. Well, in this case, in 2018, the whole stock market was falling. So the scooter ranking f rose because this stock didn't fall very much while everything else was falling apart in that period. In this case, it's been performing pretty much um, a little better than the market in kind of the top quartile right around the 70 or 75% level. You can see the gentle outperformance of the S&P 500. It looks pretty good, but again, is the best behind it. The chart started at $5. It's now at 20 it's been a good year. Um, you know, just looking historically, I, I, it would make me wonder if it's got more in the tank. Kraft Heinz, um, you know, big, big downtrend. Trying to convert here, you can see from a downtrend, it's now making new 52-week highs. This is, I guess this would have been the first new 52-week high back in August, pulled back again. 
it's moving up again. The scooter ranking isn't very positive, so it's not really one that I want to play with. Um, JBSAY, I don't even know the company. Um, more importantly, scooter ranking is starting to perk up here. That's nice. It would be, it's trying to break out to a new 52 week high. It did have a wonderful year from 2018 to 2019. Perhaps it can get that fire in its belly again. PPO has just gone above zero. Back here in November, um, did the same thing. And then COVID hit and it fell apart. So maybe it's just rekindling its energy here and it's about to turn higher. It would at least be one to, to start to monitor. I like this change in the in the scooter ranking where it was a below 50 stock. Now all of a sudden it's a 70 and perhaps we're going to see enough thrust in it that it really attracts invent, um, uh, institutional investors. And when that happens, that's a nice place to get on board. Okay, um, we moved to a different chart page here somehow. Um, let me just go grab that. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, um, so we're, we can go the... Whoops, close. Let me just get rid of that. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll down a page here and get through the food products. Lots of these have really weak scooter rankings. Not really a place we probably want to look for. Um, here's Beyond Meat down at 2.8%. So, um, you know, if anything, it's down near support, if that makes you happy. Um, Herbal Life, again, near support. So a lot of these are just um, very close to starting to break down, actually, in a bigger picture. Hormel, that chart's just a choppy mess. You'd, I'd call it spam or something like that. Um, okay, and then we got a few, quite a few stocks in here that don't have scooter ranking. So the easiest way to do that is to just scroll through them and just see, you know, at least these are trending higher. Um, okay, charts. Uh, down here under food retailers, when you see a move into consumer defensives or consumer staples, away from the consumer discretionary, a lot of times food retailers will start to perform. Now this stock was 450 in early March. It's now six bucks. That's a, that's a heady rise, right? 30%. Um, so uh, it's really starting to move. And we can just quickly look through some of these and say, you know, is there any that we like? I like that one because it's almost ready to break out to a new high. So that would be something I'd be more interested in. We're gonna click on it in just a second. But really quick, when you're working through these chart lists, and hopefully as I show you these ideas about how to work through the chart list, um, gives you some ammunition for ways to attack the market. So here's Sprouts Farm, and you can see this one's been choppy and kind of below it for five years. Can it finally break out here? And and when we start to say that the cons the consumer staple stocks are starting to outperform. Well, look what happened last week. This thing hasn't done much for a while, and then all of a sudden it goes on a 10% run and takes off. Um, you know, typically that is helpful um, to start putting it on institutional investors' radars when it's starting to outperform the S&P 500, something better is going on. And maybe it's the kind of store that people have to be in to actually enjoy shopping there. So when you get that, I'm just going to go back up to these um, first five and just say, you know, that, that chart's okay. It's pulled back a little bit. Maybe you can catch it on the next bounce. Uh, natural grocers trying to break out to new all-time highs. Performance food, this one just did break out to new all-time highs. U.S. food holdings pretty much stalling at all-time highs. Sprouts Farm. Again, so choppy sideways chart. Do you really want to own this thing for five years? Probably not. Um you know, so I was, I was interested. I saw an award today from somebody and they said, you know, we are not, we are buy and hold and we're going to, you know, make sure your money, we're not going to trade your account often. And I, I couldn't help but think, you know, on a lot of these, if they're owning any one of these names, you haven't made any money. Um, it's taken years to get back to, it, it took years to get up to this high, pulled back and now it's bounced back up and everybody's kind of excited about that. I just think there's better places to be. Um, I want to find something that's actually starting to engage. And here's a good example. This was Ingalls Market. Broke out in January to new highs. And it's just gently climbing higher, but it's up 20 bucks on 40 in a couple of months. So that's what you're hoping for is some of these, 
um, names to really start breaking out. There's Casey's General. That looks nice. Cisco, this is the food delivery company, supplies restaurants and stuff. Kroger, this one's breaking out this week. That's a beautiful chart. I would love that. Um, scooter ranking coming out of the floor here and starting to head higher. PPO bouncing off zero. Lots of things. If I was looking at one, this is this is one I least like. It was breaking out of the base, came up in 2020, pulled back, and is now starting to shoot up. I'd, I'd probably just ignore this uh, bar because it was an intra-week move and then popped back down. But I like the fact that it's just starting to accelerate higher. Cormark Holdings, again, another food delivery you know, big bases on these, if we were going to go into a long-term stock decline and these were going to start to break out to the upside, this is the kind of area where I'd, you know, start to look at these and just see if all of a sudden the whole group is starting to make new five-year highs. That would tell you that there's a different um, tone and texture to the market. Okay, um, here's WD-40, non-spectrum brands, WD-40, Energizer, right? Um, so you can start to look at these. Those are pretty good charts, and you can see they're all right. Energizer's only at 50% here for a scooter ranking way over here on the side. Um, and it's just about to break out to a new high. So if it can't break out, do I really want to own it? Probably not. Church and Dwight, this one's at least broke its downtrend, so there's something to look at there. Um, I like that. Uh, Clorox, you'd think for all the bleach the world has been buying, this thing would have been up to the moon, and it's exactly the opposite. Kimberly Clark, all of the Kleenex, you'd think that would be to the moon. Exactly the opposite. At least this one's starting to break out of a base. So you, you see it come down here, and perhaps now it's going to start its, its road higher. Okay, and I don't know why it does that. It changed to um, the different page again. Okay, so anyway, personal products. Here's Cody. Um, this chart's been in a five-year downtrend. This is the best performing stock in personal products, which I find almost hard to believe, um, but that's a terrible five-year chart. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, let's just go here. Sorry, I'm getting lost again. It jumps over to this other page. See how I have a whole bunch of tabs open here? On the other page, I don't have a whole bunch of tabs open. Um, so I'm, I want it to stay on this area. Anyway, um, the point I would make is as you work through these, you just want to try and figure out a way to cycle through and find some charts that are nice. I find by making a chart list, and in this case, there's not a lot of defensive and utility stocks, so I pile them all into one chart list, and then when the market starts to look like it wants to correct, then I would go and just kind of cruise through the top performing um, charts or watch for stocks to start to break out to new highs. Um, here's tires. Um, you know, with all of the automotive companies, you'd think that chart would be starting to move. It is just here in February and March. It's actually making a leg higher. Perhaps that's the turn for the next one. Um, Cooper, same thing, sudden splurge higher as the automotive industry gets focus. So, um, okay. With that, um, we didn't get time to cover off the utilities, but you get the idea. Once you've kind of got the, the chart list all set up, try and set it up for success. So again, clicking on scooter ranking, then clicking on the industry and then clicking on the sector is going to allow you to sort it in an order that you can go through and manage it. And if you want to, you know, look through utilities companies for dividends or whatever, this would be one of the ways to go in there and highlight that. So with that, thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesdays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. You can also see the recording on Stock Charts TV YouTube page. Thanks for taking the time, everybody. Head over to gregschnell.com slash explore and um, see if there's anything there for you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.